So let's look at the following example that deals with forces acting on electric currents and wires as a result of magnetic fields. So suppose a rectangular loop of wire is placed into a uniform magnetic field B that is shown in the following diagram. So these circles with the dot inside simply, simply symbolize that our magnetic field points out of our board. Now notice only a certain section of our electric circuit is found inside our magnetic field. So the battery inside our electric circuit creates an electric current that flows in the following general direction as described by these orange arrows. Now the length of the vertical sections of the wire is 20 centimeters while the horizontal section has a length of 25 centimeters. So these sections are 20 centimeters each and this section is 25 centimeters. If the battery has a voltage of 24 volts and the total resistance in the circuit is given by 2 ohms, in part A calculate the electric current in the wire in part B if the force acting on the horizontal section of the wire is 10 newtons calculate the magnitude of our magnetic field B and in part C what is the net force acting on the vertical sections of our electric circuit. So let's begin with part A. Calculate the electric current inside our wire. So we simply use Ohm's law which tells us the voltage across our battery is equal to the electric current inside our wire multiplied by the resistance R. So we solve for I and we see that I is equal to the voltage of 24 volts divided by the resistance of 2 ohms and that gives us an electric current of 12 amps. So let's move on to part B. If the force acting on the horizontal section of the wire is 10 newtons, calculate the magnitude of our magnetic field B. So we simply use the following equation that relates our force to our magnetic field. So we take our equation and solve for our magnetic field B. The magnetic field B as described by these circles with the dots is equal to the force acting on this section divided by our electric current I multiplied by the length of the section L multiplied by the sine of the angle theta between this section of our wire and the magnetic field. Now the section of the wire is perpendicular with respect to our field so that means sine of the angle 90 will give us 1. So we simply have the force of 10 newtons divided by the electric current calculated in part A of 12 amps multiplied by this length given by 20 or 0.25 meters. So 10 divided by 3 gives us about 3.3 Teslas is the magnitude of our magnetic field. Now let's move on to part C. What is the net force acting on the vertical sections of our circuit? So we are examining these two sections. Now in this section the wire the electric current in the wire points downward. So we apply the right hand rule to determine the direction of the force acting on this section. So we take our right hand, we point in the direction of our electric current which is downward, then we simply orient our fingers, we curl the fingers in the direction of the magnetic field and then we extend our thumb. So that means our force on this section of our wire points to the left along our x-axis. Let's call that force F left. Now we follow the same exact procedure and apply the right hand rule to this section. So the electric current points up our magnetic field points outwards so that means if we extend our thumb the thumb points to the right along our x-axis. So one force points to the right, the other force points to the left. The net force is simply the sum of these two forces. We choose this to be the positive force, so this force is the negative force. 
So force right minus force left is equal to these quantities have the same exact magnitude but are opposite in signs. So B multiplied by I multiplied by L multiplied by the sine of the angle of theta minus B I L multiplied by sine of the angle of theta. Now these angles are the same exact angles. They're perpendicular with respect to our magnetic field. So these are both 90. Now the L's are also the same. Our I is the same and our B is also the same because B is assumed to be uniform. So that means the same quantities, we subtract them and that gives us a quantity of zero newton. So the net force acting on our vertical sections of the wire is zero because these forces are equal and opposite.